Hello fellow problem solvers. So today we're going to be doing a problem from the 2019 Balkan Mass Olympiad problem number one. I just should try this nice, nice, nice problem out for a minimum of 15 minutes, ideally 30 to 45, not more than two hours. If you'd like to go along with us, give us a go for the next 10 minutes. And now let's begin a phenomenal problem. If you want to be, do functional equations in a new field, which you probably haven't seen, right? Functions from the set of primes to the set of primes like, Ooh, how do I do this? So let's begin. Let's start off by some observations. What do you notice here, right? First thing that you notice that might not be useful. For me, that is that this function is completely symmetric, which means if I swap P and Q, like everywhere there's a P, I put a Q, everywhere there's a Q, I put a P, nothing happens. So I can't look at that, but I'm in the set of primes. And there's, is the solution, it seems the solution is F of X is X for every prime X, right? Because then we have P to the Q, Q to the P, Q to the P, P to the Q. So maybe we're going to be proving that this isn't the only, like we're going to need to prove that this is the solution. In other words, that that is the only solution. And what would we even do here? What can we do? And for me, like, if I don't know what I'm going to do, let me plug in some values, maybe some smaller values to see like what happens. Say if I plug in P is equal to two, I'll get, I'll get F of two to the power of F of Q plus Q squared is equal to huh, F of Q to the F of Q squared plus two to the power of Q. Now, is there anything that you may notice for this specific thing? Also, I just realized, why didn't I plug in P is equal to Q, right? That seems like, ah, oh, because everything will cancel out if we plug in P is equal to Q. So it doesn't make sense to plug in stuff that are the same. Now, what do we have here? Please pause for five, 10 minutes and see what is it that we have here? And the answer is, well, wait a second. Well, we have two numbers, like sums here, with two numbers on both sides. And we have a two, like parity seems to be something that could be useful, right? Like parity, because there's only one prime number that is even, and then maybe we can prove f of two is two. Say that f of nothing, that no prime number was equal to two. Well, then we'd have an odd plus an odd is an odd plus an even. That's not correct. So we must either have sort of that two to the power of Q minus Q squared. This is odd. So this minus and plus this needs to be odd as well, which gives us two possibilities. F of two, if F of two is odd, then F of every other thing needs to be even, which means it has to be two. So that's one possibility, but if f of p was equal to two for every prime greater than two, it seems like we'd have a pretty quick, no, we'd have a pretty quick contradiction because we'd just swap out the two different q's and we'd be done. Yeah, that's what it seems like because f, the f would be the same here. We'd have the same thing here. So the q's would have to be the same. We also might be able to actually prove an injection, it seems by that. But through this, through this argument, either this is two or this is two, gives us that no f of two in fact needs to be equal to two. And okay, now we have f of two is equal to two. And this whole thing actually now becomes two to the power of f of q minus f of q squared is equal to two to the power of q minus q squared. So it's just a different way of rewriting this. And is there anything we have here? Also, let's just look at injectivity for a second. If f of r was equal to f of q, then we'd have for any p and r, we'd have f of p 
to the power of f of r. And what do I have? Minus f of r to the power of f of b would be equal to f of p to the power of f of q minus f of q to the power of f of p. And then if we look at this as really this minus this would then give us f of there would be no f, so it would be r to the power of p minus p to the power of r p to the power of r not a q is equal to q to the power of p minus p to the power of q. Now and this would need to hold, so if two prime numbers go to the same thing, then we have this must hold true. Is this likely? To me personally, it doesn't seem likely, and actually I have a actually there's a reason why it's not likely. This is equivalent to r to the power of say. Actually, it's not equivalent to r to the power of anything. Though, maybe r to the power of p minus q to the power of p is then equal to p to the power of, what do I get? I get p to the power of r minus p to the power of q, which is say r is greater than q, p to the power of q times p to the r minus q minus 1. So this whole thing needs to be divisible by p for every single prime p. However, this thing is congruent to r to the p minus q to the p, because r to the p minus 1 is congruent to 1 modulo p. This means that we have that this whole thing needs to be 0 modulo, like r minus q needs to be divisible by p, which gives us what? A contradiction if we pick a prime big enough. So the function is injective, and we have this. Thing. Actually, no, we have this thing right here for primes and two. It seems like it's almost as if this should somewhat like uniquely define what the function is, right? That's sort of what it feels like. Now, what happens if, say, f of q wasn't equal to q? I invite you here to pause for 10 minutes and figure it out. And now let me clear the board. And now, let's actually, wait a second, let's look at this for a second. What do we, what do we have here? Let's say f of q was equal to some other prime r. We'd have 2 to the power of r minus f of r squared. Not f of r, minus r squared will be equal to 2 to q minus q squared. So this is really... Strange, if r is greater than q, it seems like this is like two times, like we're getting, multiplying this sort of thing here, it would be as if we were multiplying by 2 to the power of r minus q, and then subtracting something a little bit. It seems like this side should be bigger than this side if r is bigger than q. And how can we maybe prove that? That this function here, as a fu if we look at this as a function of x, f of x is 2 to the x minus x squared, can we prove that this is increasing? In other words, can we prove that under which conditions is f of x plus 1 greater than f of x? Because if this function is increasing, we're done. <laughs> We've just proved that every single prime. Or it's, if it's increasing starting from one point, and we're going to have infinitely many primes just done. And this feels like it's increasing. So with that, let's see, like what do we have? 2 to the x plus 1 minus x plus 1 squared needs to be greater than 2 to the x minus x squared. Let's move this here. We need to have 2 to the x greater than 2x plus 1. <laughs> this is definitely increasing. We can prove this now via induction. And it's increasing starting from not x2, from x equals 3 onward. This is going to be 7. This is 8. And then it's increasing. And then we can prove this inductively by, by assuming this is our induction hypothesis and then proving for the next one. So this actually shows that starting from x equals 3, this function is going to be strictly increasing. So f of 3 is less than f of 4, less than f of 5, so on and so forth. 
So we have that, given this is the case, for 5, we can have, I mean, technically, perhaps, well, actually, starting from x equals 3, this is increasing. So I'm getting 2 to the 8 minus 2 to the 3rd minus 9 is minus 1. I get 2 to the 4th minus 4 squared is 0. 2 to the 5th, 32 minus, yeah, it feels good. Like, you just double check these things to make sure that you haven't done any algebraic mistake. So starting from 3, we're going to get that call this function, what's it called? Okay, I can't call it f, no, f of, call this function a function g of x. Instead of f of x, I just realized I'm using the same f as I'm using here. But we know that g of 3 is less than g of 4, less than g of 5, and so on and so forth. So we have here that g of, what's it called? g of q is equal to g of f of q, and now this can either imply that f of q is equal to q, or that f of q is equal to 2, however, there is no other prime factor, I, however, due to the injectivity, no other prime can go to 2, now we've used this injectivity, we proved, and then it follows from here that q needs to be equal to f of q, and now this finishes up the problem, and it goes to show like sometimes you will have problems it will seem like just one value doesn't give you anything, but here it seems like you're asking yourself, hmm, I'm actually curious how to actually go about this. What did this problem teach me? And that's the question I'm asking myself. I think, okay, so we had, if we had f of p equals to p for 1p, then this whole thing became p to the f of q plus q to the p, is equal to f of q to the p plus p to the q. And then we rewrote this as 2 to the q minus 2 squared. So this minus this, or actually no, this minus this, is equal to this minus this. And then we saw that this was actually a function of p, it's a function with uh, some x and p, which was equal to different places. I think it's something like generally in functions you want to see if you can, com what's it called? Instead of using equalities, will sometimes be of the form, say, g of x plus x. Actually, g of x say plus g of y is equal to x plus y. And then instead of looking at this as and a function x and y, and where you're like flipping x and y to get to something and then subtracting, you can look at this, actually a better example might be this minus this. You can then rewrite this as g of x minus x is g of y minus y, and then you get this thing right here as a constant, so you can look at this as its own separate function. So that's, I think, the idea behind this problem. It's a shame that there isn't any more things we could have done with, say, modulo q, what this whole thing is going to be. So it's interesting if we tried modulo q, what we'd have for this if f of q was equal to some r. We don't, we have way too many unknowns to be able to determine what this is going to be. Nonetheless, and actually, huh, Maybe we could have done something where if f of p isn't equal to p, but is equal to some other prime, say f of p is equal to some prime r, and maybe plugging in q, r and p would give us something that's interesting. I'm curious now, just looking at the problem, it'll give us r to the f of r plus, what's it called, q is r, it gives us an interesting thing. Plus r to the p is equal to p to the r plus f of f of p, but we have f of r to the power of r. Now this seems like 
interesting if there's now what is this modulo r for example this is zero so this must be zero modulo r however we have both p to the r and this to the r which means this is actually congruent to p plus f of r modulo r and this needs to be zero so f of r is congruent to minus p modulo r and now maybe there's some further manipulation that can be done here it's interesting maybe now looking at a modulo p we'd get something but that's a problem for another time this finishes up our problem and as always thanks for problem solving